and need a return ticket where you're going. This is a one-way journey. Straight down! down here, but we're not just here for the nasty things in life, like a block drain. And while we can't help you find a train for your boring dad or some super to video transfers for some old bird living in the past, we can guarantee you entry into the fun club. So let your fingers do the walking up to Games Master for the first challenge. My first challenge is on Bomberman 2 for the Super Nintendo. As in the previous Bomberman, we'll see our intrepid contestants attempting to send the best laid plans of their opponents up in smoke. As usual, each player begins with the ability to drop just one bomb that may power himself up by picking up the icons around him. It couldn't be simpler. And here to play the challenge we have David Bradley, Matthew Hayden, and Charles Berry. <laughs> David, uh, what's your two favourite films of all time? Um, I like Bloodsport and well, Oliver's All Right. Two very similar films there. Yeah. Yeah. OK, Matthew, what do you like to do in your spare time? I do martial arts quite uh -huh. a bit. Can you show us any of the... A little quick one? Um, not with my jeans on. Not with your jeans on. OK, fair enough, we'll accept that. And finally, Charles Berry. Charles, anyone call you Chuck? No? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. And what do you like to get up to when you're not playing games? Disco skating. Disco skating? Whereabouts this? In Hull. In Hull. Everybody in Hull, do they all go down? Yes, most people. Well, talking of ice skating, uh, this is Bomberman, and this is who you'll be playing tonight. Uh, David, you're going to go first. If any of us can beat him, you will get the joystick. And while they slide themselves gently into game playing position, we'll take a look at the latest news. The release of Bomberman 2 has seen those big-headed bomb tossers making something of a comeback. Nowhere more so than Japan, where the country is in the grip of Bomberman mania, a condition exacerbated by a daily diet of these bizarre but strangely irresistible ads. Worldwide advertising campaign in full progress, Sega are claiming there are already more 32Xs in British homes than Jaguars and 3DOs combined. The latest batch of 32X games in development include Metalhead, which involves stomping around in an armoured robot blowing things up. Motocross Championship is a sort of motocross championship type game, bizarrely. I'm Fred Couples. And this is 32X Golf, which includes all the shooting action one associates with the sport. I've got lots of guys, but I want a real man. Last week, we showed you Virtual Girlfriend, and if that's not sad enough, a viewer has sent us in this travesty, Man Enough, a chatting up game. Here I'm looking for value in a guy, and you sound cheap. It's on my hard drive. And helping me out on Bomberman is Dave Perry. Dave, grey bandana, grey blue, serious bandana for a serious challenge? It's a very serious challenge. We've got the Bomberman actually here playing. Although he's playing Golden Bomberman in the game, he won't be allowed to use the power-ups that you usually get when you are made Golden Bomberman. And as you can see, he's going to be a formidable opponent. Right, OK. Best of luck then. Two or three challenges. Whoever can beat Bomberman will get a golden joystick. David's going first. Best of luck to David and Bomberman. Off you go. OK, David's in the black. Oh, David, that's beautiful. 
himself trapped there, Dave. He, he did. managed to go. Out. And Bowman's flashing now. Yellow Bowman's flashing. Yep, he's just throwing these bombs over. And you've got Dave, he's got him oh, trapped. That's it. Trapped. That's First it. round of the bomber man. Bites the does. David is out. Let's make way for Matthew. Best of luck, Matthew. Off you go. Now, is there any lessons Matthew can learn from David's pitiful performance there? Well, really, just to watch out for Golden Bomber Man. He really is good. And he's picked up two of those glove icons already, so already he can throw his bombs over the walls. And that's, that's the way he caught that's the way he caught David out. He wasn't expecting it, and he chucked them over him, and he panicked, didn't know where to go, and he got stuck. And we can tell Bomber Man is loving every second of this. Just look at the smile on that Once face. again, he's picking up a lot of icons early on. He's got the boot icons, he's got multiple bomb icons. Now, this is crucial now. Now they can get through to each other, they can get to each other. Now they've got to be careful, and it's so the... easy to walk into each other's bombs. Oh, look at him kicking that bomb down. Oh, that was that. beautiful play. Lost that icon. Nearly oh, trapped. Nearly bomb got himself trapped. Nearly, a little too keen, going in for the kill. But now he's running. He, he's got a bit scared now, I see Matthew. He's, he's on his day. So he's, yeah, he thought he was, he was getting a bit lucky. He thought he'd got bomb man there. Now bomb man's coming after him. And that's a totally different kettle of fish. Oh, no, the Scooby A's are going to go. He's well excited. He can't contain himself. You can see it. Oh my God! What an animal! <laughs> Best of luck, Charles. Off you go. Okay, so once more, Charles is the black ball man in the bottom right. Black ball man is the gold ball man in the top left. And we've seen some excellent play already, haven't we? He knows all the tricks. He certainly does. He knows how to control himself. That's apart right. from his facial muscles, because they're like an overdrive. <laughs> but just now, when he when he foxed Matthew, he hung around waiting for Matthew. He loved Matthew with the full sense of security. He stood by his bomb. can I say? I know you're a man of few expressions, but I can tell you're burning up inside, yeah? I thought as much. Round of applause, please, for our undefeated champion, Golden Bomberman! <laughs> he is raving! <laughs> now, uh, you three didn't do terribly well, actually, so I'm just going to ask you for uh, one word in turn which describes your uh, dismal performance. David? Boring. Matthew? Terrible. And Chuck? Horrible. I think that sums it up. Round of applause, please, but not too loud. One for Chuck, Matthew, and David. <laughs> As our challengers depart once more to enjoy the unique sights and smells of our audience's cage, we'll take a look at today's reviews. First up, they're cute, they're wacky, they're a cartoon license. I hate them already. It's Animaniacs. The Animaniacs, they're those cute little lovable things that are on telly on Saturday mornings and you love them. Uh, now they've got their own game on the SNES and it ain't half bad. It's a cross between a race game and a platform game. There are three lanes of traffic, as it were, to run through. Um, the other Animaniacs get in your way and try to beat you to the finish line. It's definitely a kid's game, this one. There isn't much here for grown-ups, but um, I think youngsters will enjoy it lots. You can go into all these different movie areas, like the sci-fi area, which is a particular favourite of mine, as you have these face huggers leaping onto the poor little Animaniacs' faces. It's a good game, very colourful, very nice, nicely reminiscent of the series. Nothing special, but a good game nonetheless. Next up, the greatest game in the history of the Western world, and that's official, Sensible World of Soccer. Sensible Soccer is the greatest football game of all time, and at last we've got an update. 
It's not in the gameplay department, as you might expect, which is just as well, because Sensible Soccer has always been perfect in the gameplay department, and I can't think of any way to improve that. What they've done with this game is to give you a whole load of management options. You can choose to be any team from anywhere, basically. Um, first division right through to the third division from England, and so forth across all of like the European continent and South America. The primary feature of this new game is that it's got a management sim in it, but you don't have to play the management side at all. This is for people who haven't got sensible soccer, really. If you've already got the original, unless you're bonkers, you probably won't want this. But there are some sensible freaks out there, and I can imagine people buying both. Brilliant soccer game, possibly the best of all time. Finally, if you buy any Power Rangers merchandise this Christmas, you will die a horrible death, and that is official too. As a beat-em-up, Power Ranger isn't all that bad. It's easy to play. There's only two attack buttons, and there's some nice range of special moves. The game on the Mega Drive is just absolutely rubbish. It's hardly Street Fighter, and there's just like not very many special moves. And the ones that there are, they're feeble and weak, and this deserves to be smacked around the head with a large cricket bat. It's, it's genuinely one of the worst games I have ever laid eyes on. The, the animation is awful, the graphics are terrible, the gameplay is tedious and repetitive. It is like Double Dragon on Valium. Well, tonight, celebrity guests are limbering up for some hot man-on-game action. Let's go over to Games Master to find out what they'll be playing. I'm in fighting form today, so the next challenge I prepared is on the Super Nintendo game Fatal Fury Special. The two commandants I've selected, Big Bear and Wolfgang, are not the kind of people you could introduce to your mother, but they're pretty handy when it comes to a good old beat em up. As usual, players have three rounds to settle their differences. Playing this, we have two incredibly star guests. Please welcome from the world of WCW Wrestling, Marcus Bagley and the Patriot, otherwise known as Stars and Stripes. I want to talk about the special moves that you guys do in the ring. What's, what's your speciality? Well, uh, my special move in the ring is called a cradle suplex, and I can show you how that's done if you want me to. Please do. I was hoping you, you would. Okay. Do you want to see it done? Yeah! Oh, got it? Then, are you sure? I'm very hard. Okay, I'll put you down like this right here. Yep. Have your hand over uh -huh. here. I grab your leg like this. This I is it. very nice, actually. And then like this, we're going to go. You ready? Yep. You sure? Wait, no, you don't have to be all over. No. Okay, no, no I think I've seen enough of that, actually, yeah. I may, I may have sounded a bit scared there, but I wasn't, actually. actually end up over here. The slightest. I ended up over there. Yes. yes. On your back. But I, I think we got, we got the point of that one. Okay. <laughs> that was great. And um, moving on to you, Mr. Patriot. Uh, why the mask? Well, without this mask, I consider myself just an individual competitor, just another wrestler. But when I put the mask on, not only do I all of a sudden take on and represent the hopes and dreams of all great Americans, but all great patriots across the world. You see, patriotism is just not excluded to America. It's all over the world. So it's the hopes and dreams, the work ethic, the hard work, the right way of doing things of all the great people across the world. Okay, while I get all anthemic with the Stars and Stripes, we'll take you to a quick break. some stars of WCW Wrestling, Stars and Stripes, the tag team with us tonight. Uh, with me in the comedy box still is Dave Perry. Dave, we've got some uh, slightly misguided attempts at fashion here tonight, but enough about you. Um, <laughs> tell us about the game. What kind of special moves have both the characters got? Well, Marcus is going to be playing as Big Bear. He's got all the power moves. He's got a German suplex. He's got a ground slam move. Well, the Patriot will be playing as Wolfgang, and he's faster, and he's got a nifty fireball. Okay, well, look uh, out for those then. Best of luck to the Stars and Stripes. Let your battle begin. Okay, Marcus is big on the left hand side, and the Patriot is uh, Wolfgang Kaiser on the right. You can see the energy bars at the top of the screen. I'd say that uh, Big Bear is slightly right. Like this is the ground slam from Big Bear. Oh. He slams Wolfgang down on his head, and that took some energy. Good and that's the fireball. Good big line. A good big line. They're both standing off. I think Wolfgang's trying to pull off the special move. And it's both, not happening. Both about level, so Big Bear's in trouble now. Big Bear's lights flashing, his energy bars flashing. And Off we go now for round 
two. Wolf Dad Chrysler, i.e. Pits it one up. What would you recommend Big Bear does to try and come back now, Dave? He wants to try and get in and he wants to pressure Wolfgang. He wants to trap him in the corner, use his weight and his power moves. At the moment, he's standing back off Wolfgang, which means he's allowing him to use his fireballs and to use his speed. He wants to get in there and, and, and hassle him. Come on, fat boy, get in there. Give him some... Oh, no, Wolfgang's doing nothing. Going by the throat, punching him in the stomach. Right in Big Bear's trouble is not splashing already. Oh, dear. And Wolfgang's oh, backing away. He's going to try and use a fireball. Oh, oh, in trouble again. Big Bear's coming back. Big Bear's coming. This, this is, is what I said he had. final bout. Dave, how do you see it going? Well, it's very, very close, obviously. I fancy Wolfgang, actually. Although Big Bear got the better of that round. He got his tactics right. He pressured the other fighter. OK, off we go for round number three. And Wolfgang gets busted in, but Big Bear replies in. It's very close here, Dave. It is very, very close. And Wolfgang is, is standing back, trying to use his speed, trying to get some fireballs, but that's what he should be doing. He should be keeping his distance from Big Bear. And he's letting Fatboy get in. No, he can't compete close up with Big Bear, oh, but he does have his projectiles. Now, Patrick, you had a great start there. You took the first bout, then what happened? Things went well, wrong. It was almost over. I almost shut him out. First bout was mine. Second bout, he was on the ropes. But just like the great competitor he is, that's why he's my partner. He came back, took second and third round. So he's a champ. He certainly was. Um, Marcus, um, have you ever have you ever had a fight in real life before, you two? No, but being tag team partners, I know how the Patriots thinking. Just like he knows how I'm thinking, but just today, I, I guess I thought a little bit smarter, huh? Yeah, you certainly you had the edge in terms of the old brain power. That's right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Patriot, no hard feelings, man. It's all right, there'll be another day. Okay. <laughs> well, we hope they will, because it's been great to have you on the show, guys. But the golden joystick goes to Marcus. Yeah. Boys will be boys. Now, I hear the wailing of spoilt brats everywhere. So now it's time to eradicate their ennui in the consultation zone. Hello, and welcome to the hottest counselling session on earth. Who's first to try to light my fire? Please, please, Games Master. I want to get to level three on Micro Machines 2 on the Mega Drive, but I'm stuck on level two. Can you help? Not many people know this, but each level contains a secret warp. On level two, travel to the left-hand side of the course, leave the track, and you'll eventually find this portal. Enter it, and before you can say, beam me up, Scotty, you'll find yourself racing against William Shatter. Another enterprising solution. Nice one, big fella. Don't be cheeky. Next. Game Master, PUBG 2 on the SNES is the most bizarre game I possess. Is there any way to make it even more bizarre? Of course. Enter this code on the title screen. B A B Y. Now, when you play the game, all the floors will have turned to rubber. Hold down the dump button to your feet on the ground. That should put a swing in your step. Thanks, Games Master. Any big queries? On Alone in the Dark on the 3DO, how do I get past the two winged monsters at the top of the staircase? First, go to the room containing the four poster bed and smash the bars to reveal a key. Now, go to the chest of drawers and use the key. You will find two mirrors inside the chest. Now, make your way to the demons and place a mirror on each of the corner statues. The demons are so hideously ugly that one look in the mirror is enough for them to die of embarrassment. Thank you, Games Master. I've had my fill for one session. The rest of you will have to wait. Till next time. The latest state-of-the-art computer graphics were on show recently at the London Graphics Expo. This particular arsenal footballers from the forthcoming PC game Creature Shock. 
Namco Japan showed off their graphics know-how with this entry, Little Topo's Adventure, depicting the Cretaceous but ultimately fruitless capers of a baby dinosaur. Go on, kill him. We have to watch it. Spotty! Be our scout, okay? Warn us if you see a frog. Mm-hmm. This sequence is an excerpt from Insectoids, a new computer-generated TV series developed in France. Mortal Kombat publishers acclaim demonstrated their expertise in motion capture with this demo sequence known as Duel. But the real showstopper also came from acclaim in the form of motion capture sequences from the forthcoming Alien Trilogy game. As we speak, acclaim are busy creating similar sequences for the latest Cape Crusader movie, Batman Forever. Now it's time to mince on up to Games Master for the next challenge. Just because I'm feeling generous, I've decided to spoil you with this rather interesting feature. You may be wondering why an unknown American is attaching electrode type sensors to various parts of my anatomy. Well, this isn't one of my more peculiar sensual experiences. This is, in fact, a graphics technique used for the latest state-of-the-art beat-em-up from Accolade, the next breed. Motion capture is the computer modeling technique that turns this into this. I asked my chubby mate Scott to give me a demo of how it's done. There are six cameras around us here that use these sensors to track the position of the joints of your body. And these cameras are hooked up to those computers over there yeah. and will produce a 3D coordinate grouping of all your actions that we later use in the game. So by the end of the process, we can get from me, if I punch someone here wearing these, then by the end of that, I could be punching someone in the actual game. Exactly. I think I'll have a bit of that, Scott. Okay. I'll try that for myself now. Sure. This is John. He made the mistake of spilling my pint earlier on, so I'm gonna have to give him a kicking. Three, two, one. Go. Because of the limitations of the system, John and I recorded our movements separately. Here's John giving me what he hopes will be a thorough six, smacking. Go. Then it was my goal. Once the motion has been captured, it's a join the dots type situation to create a line figure, which is then expanded and placed in a 3D environment, allowing it to be seen from any angle. More detail is then added to the 3D model, and finally, the wireframe figure is texture mapped like these ones from the next breed game. The finished figures are now living computer-generated characters with uniquely realistic movements. Back in the studio, it was time for my little dabble in motion capture to get underway. That's me looking thoughtful on the left, and that's John. It was time for us to get hard. tried to intimidate me with his martial arts moves malarkey, but I was playing it cool because I had a little surprise in store for him. Yes, I childishly concealed a baseball bat during my motion capture session and John's hopes of victory were instantly dispatched, leaving me to look victorious and slightly overweight. Remember kids, don't try this at home unless you're particularly tough. Well, we're out of time now. I'm off to put sand in people's ice creams, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.